Today in Nerd Science, we're going to use science to prove who would win in a fight between Batman and Iron Man. We'll ditch comic book logic and use real physics to run two different scenarios. In the first, we'll see who would win in a surprise encounter where neither hero expects the fight. In the second, we'll give both heroes 24 hours of prep time to develop their strategy. By the end, we'll objectively settle this debate once and for all. We'll start with Batman's arsenal and the strategies he would bring into the fight. Batman represents peak human performance pushed to theoretical limits. Real-world analysis shows a human can achieve roughly two and a half times average strength through training, putting Batman's bench press around 600 pounds. His reaction time would clock in at 150 milliseconds, exceptional but still human. That's fast enough to dodge a baseball, but not a bullet already fired. Modern Kevlar can stop handgun rounds, but struggles with rifle ammunition. Batman's ceramic trauma plates could handle higher velocity impacts, but coverage becomes the issue. Full body protection weighs 40 to 50 pounds, severely limiting mobility. Physics forces a trade-off between protection and speed. The gadgets face real-world constraints too. His grappling hook generates roughly 1,200 pounds of force, which is enough to support his 210-pound frame, but limited by anchor point strength. Explosive batarangs pack maybe 50 grams of C4 equivalent, creating localized damage, but nothing like movie explosions. His smoke grenades work, but the thermal imaging of Iron Man's HUD would cut through them easily. Combat training gives Batman his biggest advantage. Martial arts efficiency means he wastes minimal energy per strike. His tactical thinking processes multiple variables simultaneously. Environmental hazards, opponent weaknesses, escape routes. This cognitive advantage multiplies his physical capabilities significantly. But here's the cold hard truth. Batman is still just a man. Human limitations create hard barriers. Batman's maximum sustainable output lasts maybe 20 minutes in intense combat before fatigue degrades performance. His armor gaps at joints remain vulnerable. Most critically, he lacks powered flight or ranged energy weapons. Every attack requires closing distance, burning precious energy reserves. Energy expenditure calculations show Batman consuming roughly 1,200 calories per hour during peak combat. His glycogen stores support maybe 90 minutes before muscle efficiency drops dramatically. Real physics doesn't allow unlimited endurance, no matter how well trained. That's the limit of human potential. But what happens when human limits meets a power source equivalent to a small nuclear plant? Tony Stark, the man, would have little chance in hand-to-hand -hand combat against Batman. But when he's in his Iron Man armor, things get more interesting. Iron Man's technological edge comes from his arc reactor. Conservative estimates put its output at 8 billion joules per second, equivalent to a small nuclear power plant. That's enough energy to power 2,000 homes while simultaneously running combat systems, flight, and weapons. The repulsors function like focused particle accelerators, generating roughly 3,000 pounds of thrust each. Physics calculations show his unibeam could deliver 50 megajoules of energy. These aren't comic book fantasies, but achievable with sufficient power input. Iron Man's armor is made out of rare materials that further increase his capabilities. Titanium gold alloy provides a better strength to weight ratio than steel. With modern composites, he could achieve similar protection at 40% less weight. The suit also distributes impacts across the entire frame rather than on concentrated points, increasing durability. If that wasn't enough, there's one element of Iron Man's armor that gives him an extreme tactical advantage, flight capabilities. Sustained speeds of 200 miles per hour give Iron Man three-dimensional mobility Batman can't match. However, G-forces become the limiting factor. Sharp turns at high speeds generate six to eight Gs, approaching human blackout thresholds. Here's Tony Stark's fatal flaw. His genius level intellect breeds overconfidence that makes him push systems beyond safe limits. The suit's pilot remains the weakest component. Friday's AI assistance provides superhuman reaction speeds. Computer processing handles targeting calculations, threat assessment, and tactical adjustments in microseconds. This effectively gives Tony Stark enhanced reflexes beyond human capability. But complexity creates vulnerabilities. The suit requires constant power management between systems. 
Sustained combat at maximum output drains even the arc reactor within hours. Electronic warfare could disrupt targeting systems or flight controls. Most critically, extreme acceleration forces can render the human pilot unconscious, regardless of armor protection. The suit's sophistication also means more failure points. Batman's simpler equipment rarely malfunctions, while Iron Man's advanced systems face cascading failures if damaged. Physics doesn't care how advanced your technology is when fundamental forces exceed design tolerances. Now that we know the kit each hero is working with, let's see how they fare head-to-head. -head. Let's run the numbers on two distinct scenarios that capture how these fights actually play out. The physics changes dramatically depending on preparation time and environmental factors. Scenario 1. Surprise Encounter Picture this. Batman's investigating a break-in at Wayne Enterprises when Iron Man arrives, mistaking him for the intruder. Neither hero expects combat. Reaction time becomes everything. Tony's suit activates in 0.7 seconds from detection to full combat readiness. Batman needs 1.2 seconds to assess the threat and deploy countermeasures. That half a second advantage proves decisive at combat speeds. Iron Man's first repulsor blast travels at roughly 500 meters per second. Batman can't dodge something already fired from 50 meters away. The initial strike delivers 15,000 joules of kinetic energy. Batman's armor absorbs maybe 60% of that impact, but 6,000 joules still reaches his body. That's enough force to crack ribs and cause internal bleeding. Batman's best chance involves closing the distance immediately. His maximum sprint speed hits 25 miles per hour for short bursts, but Iron Man's flight systems generate 200 miles per hour in three seconds. The math is brutal. Batman covers 37 feet while Iron Man retreats 300 feet and maintains firing position. Environmental factors matter enormously. In tight spaces like building interiors, Iron Man's mobility advantage shrinks. His suit's 500-pound mass makes sharp turns difficult without damaging walls or losing control. Batman could potentially use grappling hooks to match vertical movement, but only if anchor points exist. Combat duration favors Iron Man decisively. His arc reactor provides consistent power output while Batman's human physiology degrades rapidly. After five minutes of high-intensity fighting, Batman's reaction time slows by 15%. Meanwhile, Iron Man's systems maintain peak performance until power reserves deplete, roughly two and a half hours at maximum combat output. The damage accumulation tells the story. Batman's ceramic armor can't stop three or four direct hits before catastrophic failure. Iron Man's distributed armor system can absorb dozens of impacts before critical systems fail. Each of Batman's strikes might crack armor plating, but Iron Man's attacks threaten immediate incapacitation. As a result, in this first scenario, Iron Man has a 70% chance of winning. Scenario 2. 24-Hour Prep Time Battle Everything changes with preparation time. Batman's tactical genius transforms disadvantages into opportunities. 24 hours lets Batman analyze Iron Man's suit specifications, identify weaknesses, and prepare countermeasures. His research reveals the suit's dependency on external sensors for targeting. Electromagnetic pulse devices could disrupt those systems without permanently damaging the arc reactor. Batman's prep includes environmental manipulation. He chooses the battlefield likely an abandoned industrial complex with multiple levels, narrow corridors, and interference sources. Lead-lined walls block thermal imaging. Magnetic fields from heavy machinery disrupt electronic targeting systems. Batman deploys energy-draining tactics rather than direct confrontation. Smoke screens force Iron Man to use thermal imaging, thus draining more power. Sonic disruptors interfere with Friday's processing, increasing computational load. Each system activation draws from the same finite power source. Batman's equipment selection becomes surgical. He fabricates electromagnetic pulse grenades. Rather than Kevlar, he chooses lighter ceramic plating optimized for mobility over protection. His strategy accepts higher personal risk to exploit Iron Man's technological dependencies. The actual combat plays out differently. Batman uses hit-and-run tactics, striking from unexpected angles before disappearing. Iron Man's superior firepower means nothing if he can't maintain target lock. The environmental interference reduces his effective range from 200 meters to maybe 30 meters. Energy calculations favor Batman in extended engagement. His human efficiency actually improves with preparation, proper nutrition, hydration, and pacing strategies. Meanwhile, Iron Man's power consumption increases dramatically, 
when systems work harder against interference. The two and a half hour maximum drops to maybe 90 minutes under these conditions. Critical moments arise when Batman forces close quarters combat in confined spaces. Iron Man's repulsors lose effectiveness at ranges under 10 feet. Too much risk of self-damage from reflected energy. His flight advantage disappears in narrow corridors. Suddenly, Batman's martial arts training becomes the decisive factor. The turning point comes when accumulated electromagnetic interference causes targeting system failures. Iron Man shots miss by increasing margins while his power reserves drain faster than anticipated. Batman's patience pays off. He waits for the optimal moment when suit performance degrades below peak efficiency. Physical conditioning differences matter more in extended fights. Batman's training specifically prepares him for hour-long engagements. Tony Stark, despite the suit's protection, still experiences G-force stress, dehydration, and mental fatigue from constant threat assessment. The human pilot becomes the limiting factor. Batman wins the prep time scenario through systematic exploitation of technological weaknesses, not through superior firepower, but by forcing conditions where human adaptability trumps advanced systems. The victory comes from making Iron Man fight Batman's kind of battle rather than his own. In the end, the world's greatest detective didn't need a punch, he just needed a power off switch. Each hero has shown a scenario where they excel, but if you could choose only one, who is scientifically the best pick? Science paints this matchup as a battle between overwhelming technology and unmatched strategy. In open environments, Iron Man wins decisively. Surprise encounters, long-range engagements, or any situation requiring rapid reaction all tilt heavily toward Tony. His 8 billion joule power source, sub-second targeting systems, and 15,000 joule repulsor blasts create physical forces that no human body, no matter how trained or armored, can withstand. Whenever mobility, ranged firepower, or split-second precision matter, Iron Man dominates. But in controlled, pre-planned environments, Batman becomes the problem Tony can't easily solve. With sufficient preparation time, Bruce weaponizes the fundamental flaw of all advanced machines. Complexity creates failure points. Through electromagnetic disruption, environmental traps, and power drain strategies, Batman can neutralize Iron Man's flight, sensors, and energy reserves. In engineered environments or ambush setups, Bruce's intellect and adaptability allow him to flip the fight completely. Ultimately, it all hinges on who dictates the battlefield. Wide open spaces favor Iron Man's raw power. Constrained or heavily engineered spaces favor Batman's tactical mastery. But if you had to pick one hero as the more consistently reliable winner across most real-world scenarios, the science leans toward Iron Man. His advantages, speed, energy output, durability, and automation require no setup, no preparation, and no ideal terrain. Tony brings his edge with him everywhere, making him the more dependable victor overall. Real physics reveals that superhero battles aren't about who's stronger, they're about energy management and tactical preparation. Batman wins with prep time, Iron Man wins without it. In the end, Iron Man is a better fighter in most situations. Subscribe for more scientific superhero breakdowns that show how real-world physics changes everything.